Dear Singaporeans, my name is Roy Ngan. Earlier this week, the Singapore Prime Minister sued me for defamation. He charged that in an article that I wrote, I had suggested that he had misappropriated our CPF funds. The Prime Minister wanted me to apologize for this suggestion and to pay for damages. Yesterday, I apologized and I requested not to pay for damages. Now, I am just an ordinary Singaporean who believes that I should speak out for what is right and what I believe in. I have researched on the issue of CPF for two years now. In the article that the Prime Minister had taken issue with, he only took issue with the suggestion of the misappropriation. He did not take issue with any of the other CPF matters that I had brought up. In the letter to the Prime Minister, I had also invited the Prime Minister to an open dialogue so that we are able to have a frank conversation as to how Singaporean's CPF is being invested and used. However, the Prime Minister has not responded to this invitation. Now, I have written about how the government takes our CPF to invest in the GIC and Tomasic Holdings. GIC and Tomasic Holdings earn 6.5 to 16% in interest. However, the government only gives back to Singaporeans 2.5 to 4% in interest. Our CPF is helping to earn up to 16% in interest. However, Singaporeans only earn as low as a 2.5% interest. Recently, the government increased the CPF minimum sum to $155,000. Now, if Singaporeans' wages have increased as fast as the CPF minimum sum, the lowest wage that Singaporeans would earn is more than $3,000. However, today we still see Singaporeans earn as low as $800. In 1995, the average income that a low-income earner earns is $800. Today, it is still $800. Now, I speak up about the CPF and I speak up on our wages because this is a real concern to Singaporeans. Our livelihoods are affected. There is a study that has been done by the SMU that has shown that as much as 26% of Singaporeans are living in poverty. Now, for a country which is one of the richest in the world with one of the highest GDP per capita and which has become the most expensive place to live in the world, it does not make sense and it is not right that the poverty rate in Singapore is so high and that 30% of Singaporeans have to spend 105% to 151% of our wages. It is also not right that Singaporeans earn the lowest wages among the high-income countries, even though we are the most expensive. Now, when you look at the CPF, the GIC and the Tomasic Holdings have become the 8th and ninth largest sovereign wealth funds in the world. However, several studies have shown that Singaporeans have the least adequate retirement funds among the high-income countries and even compared to the Asian countries. Now, as I have written, the GIC has stated in their FAQ that they know that the CPF is invested in the reserves and they know that they are managing the reserves. But they say as to how they are investing the CPF, this is not made explicit to them. The GIC also says that the government does not interfere in the GIC's operations. The GIC claims that only the board of directors manage the funds in the GIC. However, if you look at the Board of Directors, the Board of Directors are made up of the Singapore Prime Minister himself, the two Deputy Prime Ministers, and the Minister of Trade and Industry, and the Minister of Education. So how can it be possible that the government does not interfere in the operations of the GIC? And how can the GIC claim that the government does not interfere? Also, how can the GIC claim that they do not know how our CPF is invested in the GIC? when the board of directors are the highest political office holders in Singapore. Now, if you would like to have more evidence of what I had just said, please look below for the links as well as the screenshots. Now, this is why I write about the CPF. There is no transparency and accountability as to how our CPF is used. The Ministry of Finance claims that full records of our GIC cannot be made known. However, in light of how the board of directors and the GIC is made up of the government, and in light of how the GIC is the 8th largest sovereign wealth fund in the world, which uses our CPF, is it only right that there is transparency and accountability to Singaporeans? 
Now, if you look at the world's largest sovereign wealth fund, the Norway's pension fund, they release full reports of how these funds are invested. And there's full transparency and accountability. However, if you look at the GIC's annual report, this information is distinctly lacking. There is no information as to how our funds are being invested. There's no transparency and accountability. However, these are our CPF funds. Now, as such, I am disappointed that as a citizen, the Prime Minister has chosen to sue me instead of engage me in an open and honest conversation. Now, I am further disappointed that having extended an invitation to the Prime Minister for an open dialogue on how our CPF is being used, he has not responded, but has continued to demand for damages. Today, our CPF has accumulated $253 billion. However, our reserves has accumulated almost $1 trillion. Our CPF is only a quarter of how much there is in the reserves. However, our CPF is used to invest in the reserves. So why do we have such a small pool of CPF? Not only that, Leung Tzu Hien has estimated that nearly 90% of Singaporeans are not able to meet the CPF minimum sum and so are not able to withdraw the CPF minimum sum and are unable to retire. Now, if our CPF is evidently invested in the GIC and Tamasic holdings and they are earning such high interest and have accumulated such high reserves, it is only right that Singaporeans should have this interest returned to us because the government takes our CPF to invest. Now, there is no transparency and accountability to how our retirement funds are being used. When the Singapore Prime Minister sued me, he did not take issue with these matters. I did not apologize on this as well. The government has still not responded as to how Singaporean's CPF is being used and to the lack of transparency and accountability to our CPF. It is only right that as Singaporeans we demand transparency and accountability to the use of our CPF and demand that our CPF is returned to Singaporeans. Professor Christopher Balding has also calculated that for the average Singaporean, we are losing as much as $300,000 for the interest that is not returned back to Singaporeans. The Singaporeans have a right to demand for transparency and accountability. I am disappointed that the Prime Minister has chosen to use the law against an ordinary citizen like me who believes in speaking up for what is right in Singapore. Yesterday, someone told me, he thanked me for writing about the CPF and he thanked me for speaking out. He said he's sorry that I'm being sued. But he said that because I spoke up, he finally received a call from the government asking him what he thought about the CPF. He was finally being heard because I spoke up. He thanked me on behalf of himself, his family, and his children. And at that point, I knew that what I was doing was right. On Monday, the Prime Minister wants me to reply to him how much damages and costs I am willing to pay to him. I do not have an answer. I am only an ordinary Singaporean. I am not the Prime Minister. I just want to question what is right. I just want to question what is going on in Singaporeans. And I want to speak up on behalf of Singaporeans. Now as I had shown you, it is clear that some things are missing and how the CPF is being reported. Singaporeans have a right to know. Singaporeans, you have to know this. I'm only one person. I will stand up and I will fight for as long as I can. But I'm only one person. If I end, then that's fine. But will there be anyone else who will stand up and speak up? Will Singaporeans stand united and will Singaporeans rally together for one another. We have lived in fear for too long and the government has once again 
use the law to prosecute and silence innocent Singaporeans. This is not right. This is, this is not morally right. Singaporeans, I am only one person. When only one person speaks out, there's only one voice. Now I have a very loud voice and I have used it to the maximum impact. But I am only one voice. And I need your help. And I need your strength. And I need you to be willing to be brave to stand up. I need you to look at evidence and I need you to believe that we can stand up and represent one another. Now I will continue to do what I can for as long as I can. But with this lawsuit, you can be sure that I might not be able to do further. But I will as far as I can. Now with this lawsuit, my character will be discredited. My character will be assassinated. But it is fine for me. Because my reputation is not something that I am concerned about. What I am concerned about is that Singaporeans will be aware of what is going on in Singapore and that we will continue to fight for our freedoms and our rights. On Monday, the Prime Minister would like me to offer how much I would like to pay in damages and costs. I am only an ordinary Singaporean who has spoken up because I believe in speaking the truth and in speaking up for my fellow Singaporeans. It's a sacrifice that I have long believed that I need to pay for, that I knew that I was willing to fight for and I knew was worth it. I do not regret what I have done and I am glad that there is this opportunity for more Singaporeans to finally be aware of the CPF. This whole episode has allowed more Singaporeans to come onto the blog to find out more about the CPF and if anything, I am more than grateful. It doesn't matter what will happen to me, but it does matter what will happen to the future of Singapore and to our lives. I write because I wanted to fight for my future, my family and my nieces. I don't wish that this will stop. I wish that this is the start of something new. I wish that Singaporeans will become united and will rally around one another because of this. I wish that for ourselves, for our freedom, and for our future generations and our children, we will stand up and fight. Because this is not a battle that we will lose. All the information is out there. It is whether we are willing to take it, use it, and advocate for it. I'm not sure what will happen to me. But you have a choice.